Hi, this is Robbie with Techner Photography. I recently did my first wedding shoot as the primary photographer. It's not typically the type of photography that I do, but I had a friend that begged me and begged me and I finally decided that I'd give it a shot. I've done a few weddings as a second shooter, which I would highly recommend everyone doing if you've never done that before. It helps you anticipate the things that will be happening on that wedding day that you may not otherwise be familiar with. Going through the process a couple times is very good before you step up and do it as the primary photographer. So for this wedding shoot, I actually brought a second shooter with me. She's fairly amateur level, but very creative. She has a good eye and it's really good to have a second shooter there. Someone to cover the angles that you just physically can't get. You can position them um, to get a long or a wide shot while you're getting detail shots during the ceremony because you literally can't be in two places at once. And it's always nice to have a second set of eyes. They may see someone, some interaction that is really touching that you just, you're covering the bride and groom, you may not actually be able to capture. So it's good to have both of those cameras going. And in my case, I had three cameras going. I was using the Black Rapid Yeti and I had two cameras on me, one with a 24 to 70 and one with a 70 to 200 lens. So I could cover all of my bases at 2.8 if I needed to. And I had my second shooter with my older, basically my backup camera, the Sony A550 with my kind of ultra zoom on it, the 18 to 255. It works great, it covers all the bases. You can zoom in and get detail shots or wide angle. So I left that with my second shooter. Unfortunately, she had the camera in auto most of the time, which is at her comfort level, and that's fine. But because of the lighting situation on that day, it was very complicated. Uh, most of the subjects were backlit, so the camera was having a little bit of difficulty with that. So I would recommend always shooting in RAW on a wedding day. That way you'll have the power to change your white balance after the fact, or you'll be able to recover a lot more of the details from the shadows. If you're backlit and the camera decides to underexpose by two stops, you can save that picture. Maybe make it black and white, but you can save that picture. So another reason to shoot raw is when you're going to watch the bride get ready, capture all the moments in the bride's hotel room while she's putting makeup on or having her hair done. The light in, at least in my particular situation, was horrible. We had some small windows with basically sunlight shining right in those windows. Then we had a bunch of incandescent light bulbs around the room. So you had very different white balances. Even if you're walking down the hallway, it's very different. You have basically yellow on one side and blue on the other. So black and white is your friend, raw is your friend. You might be able to save some of those. I think I was able to do a pretty good job recovering and creating some pictures that they are really happy with. So for my camera and lens selection, I brought my Sony Alpha A77, which I love. It's a fantastic camera. It's so fast. Um, I had the 70-200 28 on that. Tamron in this particular case. I also was carrying my Sony a7 with my Zeiss 24 to 70 lens on that. And switching between the two, it's almost night and day. The a77 is so much faster. I guess the DSLR body is so much faster. Autofocus is faster. Startup is fast. Everything about it is really amazing. I really love the form factor of a DSLR. Uh, a7 does great. It, did good for low light situations. This thing eats batteries though. I had, I had four batteries with me. I went through two of them completely drained and my third battery was down to 40% by the end of the night. The A77 on the other hand was on its first battery. At the end of the night, it was down to 40% battery. The A550 was about the same. same first battery down to about 40% after the entire day. And my second shooter took 1,500 shots with that camera. So 1,500 shots, one battery for, down to 40%. I was pretty impressed with that. I also brought my ultra-wide Tokina 11-16. to It's really good for reception shots. Everyone's dancing around. You can literally hold the camera over your head and get people dancing. It's a really neat perspective and a 2.8 lens that lets in a lot of light. You're able to get some cool shots. I also brought my 100 millimeter macro lens for any specific detail shots, like the ring or certain flowers. 
Speaking of the rings, detail shots like that. It's probably a good idea to write down a list for your first couple weddings of detail shots you must get. I was going through the night, we were having a good time getting all of the shots that we needed to get. And it was getting close to the end of the night and then remembered, ah, haven't shot the rings yet. This is slightly problematic just because you can't shoot the rings until pretty much they're on the fingers of the bride and groom. So after the ceremony, that's when you can go up to the bride and groom and say, hey, can I get the rings? It's usually a good idea to ask while they're sitting down for dinner. You can snag the rings, do ring detail shots. But I was doing other things. I totally spaced out, forgot. So remembered a few hours later, we went and got the rings. We got our shots. But have a list. Write down a few of those key shots and check it. When you're sitting down to get some food, check your list. Do I have ring shots? Ah, got to do that. Good idea to keep in mind. And then just have fun. Everyone's having a great time at these events, so document it. Capture the moments as they unfold. Me personally, I don't consume any alcohol while I'm there. My second shooter doesn't either. We're professional, on the ball, dressed very nicely. We're working. We're professionals there for the day. So what else did I bring with me on that day? I brought my two speed lights, which actually came in handy for shots like this. I had my larger flash with me at all times. It's, I think, a guide number 58, and it was on one of my cameras, the A7 or the A77. I had my smaller speed light on my second shooter's camera, and I had an Omnidome on hers. With mine, I was trying to bounce the flash off of any, any surface that I thought would uh, give a more flattering type of light. I also brought a couple other bells and whistles that I didn't really need. So I also brought a flash extender cord so I could detach the flash from my camera and hold it and shoot. I didn't really have time to do that. I did use my camera's off flash again for this particular shot. And because I had the A77 with me, which has a pop-up flash, I could use it as a commander. This is one thing that really annoys me with some of the flagship cameras, the uh, Canon 5D Mark III and the A99. They don't have a built-in commander flash. So you're basically screwed. You can't control your other flashes without an additional flash to add to the camera. So because I have my A77, I could put it in commander mode, control the flash in my hand, control the flash in my second shooter's hand, and create a pretty cool picture. I also brought my Gobi Gorilla Pod, a little tripod. Uh, I thought I would have time to use that, but it turned out that I didn't. I was really busy. And I think that's about it. I brought spare batteries for everything. I had a spare battery for my A77, for the A550, uh, four batteries for my A7, I had backup double A's for both of my flashes in case we went through all of those. As it turns out, they were relatively new batteries and we didn't need them, but something to keep in mind. This is a special day and you can't really screw it up. You've, there's only one shot at this, so I have a backup for pretty much everything when I'm there. And hopefully I don't need to use it, but contingencies are important. Also, one kind of nice thing, go around during the reception and get the business card of the person that made the flowers, maybe the venue, maybe the um, caterers, and potentially you can share pictures with them after the fact that might make them happy. Maybe they'll hook you up at some point in the future. So I hope if you're considering being a wedding photographer for the first time, this might help you a little bit. This was my first experience, and like I said, this is not my type of photography typically. It was a really good learning experience. I may do another one at some point in the future if the opportunity presents itself, but I'm probably not going to actively pursue this just because it's a lot of work. At the end of the day, between three cameras, we had more than 3,000 pictures. And to put that into perspective, on the day of the wedding, you're there for 10 hours, but it may take 30 or 40 hours of post-processing work to whittle all those pictures down and then actually edit them. So keep that in mind. You don't have to overshoot Get the moments, but don't go too crazy. It'll save you a lot of time and energy the next day, the next week. So I hope you found this somewhat helpful. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.